Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 128 of the American Muslim Experience, and I'm your host, Pervez Ahmed, and I'm joined by my co-host, Omar Ansari. Assalamu alaikum, listeners. Assalamu alaikum, Pervez. Hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, um, doing really well. And uh, where are we right now, man? We are on this amazing road trip. Uh, Omar and I decided to do yet another SoCal um, sojourn. Right. Yeah. Well, the last one was just amazing. Yeah. We had a great time going down to Orange County to see Dr. Mazama Siddiqui back in in July. Right. And I was telling Parvez, we got to do this again. This is this is this is great. We're we're getting some podcasts recorded. We're also having a great time hanging out, enjoying the California, Southern California sun. Although it's a bit rainy out uh, yeah. here in here in early December, but uh, we had a great time enjoying the culture, enjoying the food. Yeah. And we're doing it again and having a great time here in uh, slightly north of L.A. That's right. We are not in Orange County, but we are in Pasadena. And um, yeah, I, so I know we had reached out. We're, we're sitting in these lovely, in the, in the lovely uh, offices of uh, MPAC, of uh, Muslim um, Public, well, sorry, Muslim Public Affairs Council. And we're, we are joined by Sue Abedi, um, who's one of our guests. We actually are fortunate enough to have two guests. So we had reached out to Sue to um, when we decided to do this road trip because we wanted to talk about representation in the media and all the great work that MPAC has done to uh, further that. And um, it so happened that while we were in communication with Sue, we, um, Dr. Evelyn Sultani, who is a returning guest, um, she has her book coming out. So we decided, why don't we try to record both of them together? And unbeknownst to us, not only do they know each other, but they've actually worked together because there is the Obeidi al Sultani test that we will definitely be talking about. But uh, a little bit about their backgrounds. Um, Evelyn Sultani is a leading expert on the history of representations of Arab and Muslims in U.S. media. She seeks to educate audiences on the history of stereotypical representations of Arabs and Muslims in the U.S. media, its consequences as evident in public opinion and government policies. She is the author of Amer Arabs and Muslims in the Media, Race and Representation After 9-11. And she, her latest book, which is the one we'll be definitely talking about as well, is um, Broken, The Failed Promise of Muslim Inclusion, which we will be discussing later today, as I said. Um, as I mentioned, she, uh, she co-authored the Obeidi al-Sultani test to help Hollywood improve representations of Muslims. Um, she hosts the podcast, Muslims as Seen on TV, and she's also the guest cur curator of the online exhibit, um, ArabStereotypes.org, uh, which is with the Arab American National Museum. Um, Professor al Sultani received her PhD from Stanford University in 2005, um, and in 2000, 2019, she became associate professor in the Department of American Studies and Ethnicity at the University of Southern California here in Los Angeles. Um, Sue Obeidi is the director of the Hollywood Bureau Muslim Public Affairs Council. Since the since MPAC's um, inception, how the Hollywood Bureau was launched in 2011. Sue Obeidi has blended the, her love of faith with her love of film, television, and digital series to change and expand the narrative of Islam and Muslims in the entertainment industry. So we are absolutely delighted to welcome our two guests to the show. Well, welcome to the MPAC office, <laughs> and, and I no. couldn't imagine having this conversation without my dear friend, Dr. Evelyn Sultani, who I met during the pandemic. I've known pre-pandemic, but actually worked with during the pandemic, and my life has been enriched by this relationship. Nice. And yes, we did co-author a narrative test, which we'll be talking about later, but I just love the, the cohesiveness of our relationship. And we definitely want to know sort of that origin story about how you two met and, and, and started collaborating. Sure. Um, we often like to start off with origin stories. Last time, of course, you know, with Professor Al Sultani being a returning guest. By the way, should I call you Evelyn? Oh, or should I, fine. Is that Thank is that okay? You. Yes. And I kept <laughs> last episode. I kept going in, or going back and forth between Professor Al Sultani and Doctor Al Sultani. So. That's acceptable too. <laughs> but if All you of the above. <laughs> but as a returning guest, if you don't mind, um, well, uh, if you don't mind, Evelyn. So that'll that'll be great. And Sue. Yeah, that'd be fine. Great. So yeah. Sue and Evelyn. Uh, but yeah, last time we had uh, Evelyn on, Evelyn on the show, we uh, talked about your origin story already. So certainly our listeners can go back and look at that. But I would like to for you to kind of like on a, on, a, on a kind of a high level do discuss that because I think you 
that unique perspective that you were in the family you were born into and the family you were raised with, um, I think really you know, leads directly into the work you do and very, very sort of beautifully. So I would love to tell the story yeah. of how I met Sue. <laughs> Sure, but, sure. I, but I also want to know your origin yeah, story. Yeah. Oh, my origin story, story yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, on a sort of a, Just a, yeah. a brief thing. There you go. A okay. Cliff Notes version. But because I think it informs, it if does. you will, the work you do it and does. the work we want to talk about today. Yes. So, yeah. I was born and raised in New York City. Mm-hmm. My dad uh, was from Iraq and he came to the U.S. in the 1960s. He's Iraqi Muslim Shia. And he has one of these stories of coming with nothing, not knowing the language and starting from scratch. And uh, he met my mom apparently at a salsa nightclub in New York City, and she uh, <laughs> gives face. Know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, she was uh, from Cuba, Catholic, and came to the U.S. after uh, Castro's regime yeah. during the big influx of uh, exile of Cubans. Uh, they're both of them are no longer alive, and I was raised by my stepmother who is Colombian Catholic and came in the 1970s. Uh, and when I was growing up, it was New York, it was very diverse, it was very multicultural, but still, uh, we lived in a building with 600 apartments and we were maybe one of five uh, people of color in the whole apartment building. So every single day, where are you from, where are you from, where are you from, where are you from, and where are you from? In New York. In, in New, New York, York City. Wow. Yeah. And I went to the United Nations International School, which was a very unique experience, very multicultural, and my parents sent me there because they didn't want me to feel left out. Mm. So that's the brief version. Got it, got it. No, no, it's, <laughs> awesome. I, I found it fascinating the last time and I still find it fascinating just given, because like not only, of course, the nature of living in or growing up in a multicultural, multi, multi-religious even uh, family, but the fact that you, you have a household of an Iraqi American, a Cuban American and a Colombian American, yes. all of whom have nothing, uh, like no type of stereotypes, you know, as far as Americans are concerned with regards to their places of origin, right? But no, I mean, obviously I'm being sarcastic because they do. And so, you know, kind of growing up in that milieu must have been just fascinating. And again, you, you talked it, you, you talked a little bit more in length about that, um, but we want to talk about Sue too. Yeah. So your origin story. My origin, well, yeah. it was 1970 uh-huh. when my parents came from Palestine and the first movie I ever saw in my entire life was The Sound of Music with Julie Andrews. Andrews, And I said, that's what I want to be. I want to be an actress. Well, no immigrant Palestinian family uh, wants to hear that their child wants to be an actress. Back in the day, that wasn't the coolest thing. And so sure. I was never forbidden, you know, but I wasn't, I, you know, to, to engage and to take classes. But I wasn't really also, you know, you know, encourage, draw, raw, let's do this. They were hoping that the classes that I took would just kind of come out of my system and, and what have you. But later on in life, when I was a late teenager, early 20s, in, in my early 20s, I realized, you know, it wasn't really the acting that I wanted to do. It was really the storytelling because because storytelling had such an impact on me. Television and film were my shelter from the storm. And the storm is that being the other. I was never bullied in, in in school, so I can't claim that. But like Evelyn, you feel like the other. You just do. My real name is Suhad Obeidi, and it's a very common name, you know, in the Middle East. But in America, when you tell someone, you know, your name is Suhad, they're like, well, Suhad what? What did she have? And so they, they just made fun of me. And I was fine. And in fifth grade, I just said, you know what? Just call me Sue. And it stuck. I never legally changed it, of course, but... It just stuck. So I'm I'm Sue Abadi. I'm I'm known as Sue Abadi. Um, with regards to the industry, I'm a huge consumer of content. I love just melting away in a good story. Growing up, though, I I did take some of the th- I I did um, assimilate in a way or try to assimilate um, by being. Marsha Brady, for example, or being like Marsha Brady. That was a TV show back in the day. It was called The Brady Bunch. Of course, Bunch. of course. And yes. for example... Bur- Burbiz and I... Are, did you grow up? Because I grew up on the first run episodes. That's yeah, how old yeah, I am. Yeah, okay. Well, we well, were, you probably all, grew up on the reruns. We were literally just talking about, hey, I think they started coloring. It was black and white for a while, or maybe not. Maybe they started coloring. So we were just chatting about The Brady Bunch. Of course, I'm glad you you gave the context of this. Probably some listeners who have never heard of the Brady Bunch. Yeah, yeah it was on Friday night's <laughs> ABC. We're, we're certainly of your vintage. All good, all we're, good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a, 
uh, eating a food journal assignment back in, in, in when I was in elementary school, and I was to write down what I was supposed to, what I was eating for a week. And I was so embarrassed to say I was eating falafel or hummus or fool, you know, anything that had good protein that sustained you, right? <laughs> so I told my mom, because I didn't obviously want to lie, I said, for this week, I want you to buy me, you know, you know, this type of cereal, toast, butter, whatever Bar- Marsha Brady ate, that's what I wanted to eat and drink, the orange juice and all that. And, and my mom, of course, was disappointed, as you can imagine, saying our food is wonderful, beautiful. Yeah. And, but nonetheless, she understood, you know, the peer pressure. So for that week, I did eat a bunch of sugar, carbs, fat, you know, just to say what I ate and I didn't have to lie about it. Wow. And now it's like, no, it's like really crazy that people are paying $15 for falafel wraps yeah. and stuff like <laughs> that. And I apologize, I may have missed it, but which, which city? Are you I in? grew up in Cerritos, California. Yeah. Yeah which is one of the most diverse cities in the nation, or at least was at one point in time. And we have the largest auto center there, oh, too. Yeah, okay, okay. Auto Center. Um, so I did grow up in a suburb of L.A. Right. Um, just fa- let's fast forward. I, I went to college, obviously, majored in marketing management. I got my, you know, I got my experience in in management by, by entering a management training program at a bank, Back in the day in 2000, it was called World Savings. And I just climbed that ladder and it was fun. And, you know, I let go the ambition of wanting to be anything in the industry. And so, but I still was a moviegoer, love TV. Mm-hmm. And I just had the best experience in corporate America. Um, I lasted 10 years. Year eight, I had what I call a midlife crisis where I was getting, I thought I got everything I wanted. And I was doing a great job and all the strokes in the world, but feeling very empty that this is for nothing. This is all a bunch of hours and I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a lot of purpose. My work doesn't have a lot of purpose. I was respected. I was loved. I great, but didn't have a lot of purpose at the end of the day. So I saved up a lot of money and I quit and I don't recommend anyone quits a job without finding another job, but that was a different time. And I came to work for the Muslim Public Affairs Council 10 months before 9-11. And I knew at that point my purpose. And my purpose was to help the community, help be in this wonderful organization that is really the mission is to protect the image of Islam and Muslims, whether it's in government or in Hollywood. And the Hollywood Bureau didn't exist. I I came in as the director of operations because of my management skills, and my finance skills and, and what have you. And as 9-11, uh, obviously, um, in the aftermath of 9-11, Hollywood really started creating even more problematic content. And we started engaging with the industry. You know, we started coaching, we started consulting. Um, we started the Hollywood Bureau in 2011 as a way to be a resource to the industry. Um, it was great. We're, we're, you know, we can talk about what we do later, but yeah. it's just about my origin story and the way I became the Hollywood Bureau director. I was the director of operations. And then as it got really bad in Hollywood, I became the, also the, the head of the Hollywood Bureau. So now I had two full-time jobs. And when Donald, and, and then in 2011, we started the Bureau. But when Donald Trump ran for office and won, that's when it just got unsustainable for me. And so the board, bless their hearts, just said, you know what, she's going to do one thing now, and that's Hollywood. And so I've been the director of the Hollywood Bureau um, since 2017, and and then we can talk about the work um, later. But that's my origin story, my passion. My other passion is, my first passion is the love of my faith. And while I don't come off as a, you know, hardcore you know, Muslim, I, I absolutely am a practicing Muslim, and that's how I lead. And my second love is entertainment and the power of it. Yeah. And and so, alhamdulillah, my two worlds collided, yeah. and here, I, here we are. It's not everybody who gets to do both of their passions and bring that to their, you know, what they do for a full-time. Well, that's why I'm Full-time like, employment, so that's great. I'm 22 years in, Good so for you, right. yeah, yeah, that's right. Good for you, and good for that so-called midlife crisis that you yeah. had way back and it was in a nice, America. Yeah, it was, a, it was really, everything happens <laughs> yeah. for a reason, but yeah. the midlife crisis wasn't, I wasn't driving fast cars or, or I wasn't at bars, but it was really uh, about soul searching <laughs> and who I am and what yeah. my purpose was. Right. Ca- yeah. Call it a quarter life crisis because it sounded <laughs> like it was. Uh, yeah, you don't know how old I am. It was a midlife crisis. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's my origin yeah, story. Yeah, absolutely. So where did the two stories inter interject? Yeah, let, exactly. let me Evelyn tell Dr. Sue. Evelyn. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> I was a professor at the University of Michigan for 14 years. Yeah. And while I was there, I remember seeing Sue's op-eds pop up and what? MPAC has a Hollywood bureau and who is this woman? And look at these op-eds. And so she was in the back of my mind as someone that I should meet. And then I ended up moving to Los Angeles four years ago and we met consulting on Aladdin. We did. Yes. And we only met consulting on Aladdin. We really didn't engage. Though. No, we just had a brief introduction yep. and then I reached out and we had lunch yep. nearby the MPAC office and started to talk. And then I had a fellowship uh, from the American Council of Learned Societies that gave me a year off to work on my book. And it also included um, some opportunities to engage with the public in some way. So I contacted Sue and I said, I have this opportunity with this uh, fellowship. How about if we team up and do something, maybe write an op-ed, maybe you know, do something together. And we decided that given the conversations we had had right. about how Hollywood was improving representations of Muslims, but oftentimes failing or falling short, uh, that perhaps we could take our collective observations about the advancements in the film industry and create a test. So we started talking to each other about how do we create a test, what are the criterion for the test, mm -hmm. and we came up with the Obedi Al Sultani test to help Hollywood improve representations of Muslims. Thank you so much for yeah, uh, you know, uh, kind of framing that as well in terms of like sort of the backdrop or the backstory to how that came together or the collaborative uh, effort between the two of you. Um, I do want to kind of frame even the narrative test, though, in kind of some of the things that we had talked about last time we had you on. It was a really fascinating conversation. At that time, um, the live an the uh, live action version of Aladdin had just come out. Um, you're both uh, an advisor, as you mentioned, both of you. But uh, but at the same time, you had written that um, that uh, it wasn't a critique, but it was like like a, right an it article, was a, and it was an article about the movie and about representation of Muslims and Arabs in that movie. And so um, we had had a kind of a fascinating conversation about, um, and, and the way you had framed it at that time was beginning with the seminal work of Edward Said's Orientalism and, uh, you know, uh, she, uh, Jack Sheehan's book, Real Bad Arabs, which is fascinating. He had reviewed a thousand movies, a thousand, and uh, found only 12, right? I think 12 positive representations, 50 or so? Mute, new, uh, neutral representations, and then the rest, which means over 900 negative representations of Arabs and Muslims. And so um, I, I would love for you to kind of frame the narrative test, and we'll get into the salient features of that test, um, within kind of that, like, kind of that backdrop of the seminal works of these two in particular. Uh, and I love sort of, I think, you, you like you mentioned, uh, Sheehan's kind of like, um, like the, the whole evolution of, of Muslim and Arab representation and portrayals in Hollywood can be summed up by belly dancers, bombs, and no, billionaires and bombs, right? So I'd lo love to for you to talk about that. And of course, Sue, please chime in oh, anytime yeah. no that you feel like, yeah. So the backdrop yeah. here is that we've inherited a history of stereotypical representations. And I should mention that part of that stereotypical representation is the conflation of Arab and Muslim identities. And we are finally now if we get to talking about the present, starting to see more black Muslim representation, more queer Muslim representation, more of a variety of representations of Muslims. But uh, what Jack Shaheen's book shows us is that Arab and Muslim identities have been co-produced and stereotyped for centuries and for a century and, and more. Uh, so where we entered with Aladdin is like, oh, wow, Aladdin is being remade. The cartoon Aladdin from the 1990s was extremely offensive. It portrayed uh, the uh, Aladdin and Jasmine as having American accents and as being good, and the other characters as having weird accents and being bad. It had the song where uh, we're going to cut off your nose if we don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. And actually, uh, Jack Shaheen uh, worked on change, getting that song changed. And so here we are, 2019, Aladdin is coming out. And they've done a lot to change it. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with them reaching out to consultants uh, like Sue uh, to help with the process. Right. And one of the things they really did well was casting. Sure. 
because we have a history of whitewashing. Yeah. White actors playing these roles. This was the same studio that brought us um, uh, Gyllenhaal as Prince of Persia. <laughs> Prince of Persia. Exactly. That's right. so, yeah. The Those... not so Persian Gyllenhaal, or not at all Persian Gyllenhaal. Yes. Exodus, Gods and Kings. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Ghost in the Shell. Sure, sure. What was the Tom Cruise one? Uh, the, the Last Samurai. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so this yeah. history of, right. of whitewashing. Yeah. So finally, yeah. they got the memo. Oscar So White helped, I think, with that. And so they did appropriate casting. Mm. South Asian, Iranian, Arab cast. Wonderful cast. Yeah. Uh, but then the question remains, with this effort to do something new, how much progress is it if you think that Orientalism is an improvement to terrorism? And so that's where my critique came in. That's right. That this is a wonderful improvement, but, and that's also where two other things happen. One is the Obedi al Sultani test saying this kind of scenario is happening in many different arenas. We had many examples of similar kinds of TV shows that were, wow, they really made a difference. They're trying so hard. They care about diversity. They're including Muslims, but then there's something that goes wrong. And so that's what we were talking about. How, how can we help? Right. Hollywood prevent these mistakes. In, in fact, what you just mentioned was the sort of the sort of first point, right, yes. of the of the test. Yeah, I just wanted to just say yeah. Hollywood never uh -huh. had a problem with including Muslims. Uh -huh. That was never our problem. We were included. <laughs> right. But back to your, you know, Dr. Shaheen, God rest yeah. his soul. Yeah. You know, the, the 900 plus films, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't an issue of inclusion. Right. It was the right inclusion, authentic inclusion, accurate, nuanced inclusion. Sure. I just wanted to say that our road has just been um, the most interesting, I think, of all minority communities, in my opinion. Why? Because we're also carrying the baggage of Muslim-majority drama, Muslim-majority country drama. Right. So what goes on there impacts us here. It impacts us also here in government, you know, in, in D.C. and definitely in Hollywood. But I just wanted yeah, to say, right. I, I sometimes, like, take pause when when I talk about inclusion, because no, I sure. mean it, and yeah. I want it to be good inclusion, mm -hmm. and and but we have been included, right. and that's where the problem lies. Right, exactly. <laughs> can right. you have can, been represented? Can yeah. you quickly go over, uh, briefly summarize the five points of the test? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, maybe like we could do it like a sort of a point Just by a, point, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I think what you mentioned earlier, um, Evelyn, like the idea of making sure that the representation doesn't just reinvent old tropes. And that's the first point of the of the narrative test, exactly. which I love. And 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 so I think your critique, after reflecting on and um, acknowledging all of the positives of that movie of Aladdin, was to was that question right? Is with regards to the actual portrayal, on the other hand, you know, are we just not reinventing kind of an older trope of the exotic, uh, yeah, foreign? you know, kind of Muslim kind of thing, right? With the, with obviously the genie and everyone knows the Aladdin story. So the it, counter, the counter yeah, argument right. to that, uh, that some people say was, well, that's the story. It has to be that way. Right. So that's always the, yes. the counter. Uh, and oh, to, you mean to the, agree that's yes. to, to a degree that's true, but what's the, but yes, it's not, it might, it's not possible to redo Aladdin outside <laughs> of Orientalism. Yeah. So then the larger question is why is that story being created rather than the million other stories that you could tell? Mm. Sure. And it's money making, and there's a trend right now with Disney remaking old movies, yeah. having you know Black Princess, and modernizing things, making it more diverse because those are old stories that sell. Remaking them to new audiences, but that is part of. So in the book, I call it the diversity compromise, which is there's an effort towards diversity, but it feels like a compromise. And so we got Aladdin, and it's an improvement, but it's still Orientalism. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say, look, at the end of the day, they call it show business for a reason. It's a business. So whatever is tried and true, even if you kind of tweak it a little bit, it's still going to make billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so that, because I fall on like, why can't they come up, the industry come up with new stories? Why do we have to keep going back to the old and just, you know, even Freaky Friday was remade. <laughs> like, and, you know, um, because it's tried and true. Tried and true. Um, so I love it, Freaky Friday. <laughs> I love and I saw, I was old enough to see it with Jodie Foster, and you know. Yeah. But my point is, this is a money making industry, and it makes sense. Why aren't they creating a lot of newer stuff, or why are they just kind of recycling? Because it makes money. So what we have to do is try to figure out, and we are. 
how else can we make the industry money? How else can our stories, you know, be money makers so we can move away from those tropes? And I'm not saying be in this industry to make money. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this is a business. If something works, it's just muscle memory. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, you know, the, the, um, I remember, and, and I, I'd love for you to kind of maybe uh, how the narrative test also kind of, you know, furthers the conversation that you bring up in your in your first book. Um, this idea that just analyzing portrayal uh, within the within the frame of good, bad isn't the whole picture. In fact, it's not it's not even the right analysis but for Vince, yeah, can sure, dr sure. um yeah. evelyn go through the five points real oh quick? yeah 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 go ahead so the first uh criterion is avoid old tropes do new stories yeah. self-explanatory with aladdin there are so many new stories let's hear the new stories yeah. Yeah. the second is that to avoid these mistakes that we're seeing it's important to have a muslim writer in the writer's room or a muslim who's on board from the very beginning a lot of my consulting experience has been being brought on at the very end when there's nothing you can do. Mm. And I just want to add, too, as consultants, when we're given content that's already been shot to consult on, you know, the reality is even our notes, like no one's going to go back to Australia or Austria <laughs> to right. reshoot anything because, you know, Sue and Dr. Evelyn said that's inaccurate, you know. So, yeah. And, and, and so what does that tell you, though? I'm sorry. I didn't mean, no, like, I'm just going to say real quick. Um, having a consultant on, on staff is one thing. We're starting to thankfully even see the actual creators, yeah, absolutely. the directors, absolutely. the writers, actually exactly. like yeah. Disney's an example. Absolutely. And and for MPAC, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, we want to work our way out of consulting because if we create the pipeline, the strong pipeline of Muslim talent and mm -hmm. get them in the door, and we're just one organization doing this, and there's other other organizations doing great work, we will hopefully get out of consulting eventually and we're not there yet but eventually yes um, i agree the, the point of this criterion is not like get me and sue in the door but correct. rather have someone who's on your creative team if you're writing about muslims you have to have muslims on the creative so team so you don't need us from the exactly yeah. from that the very would be beginning. the win oddly enough uh, yeah. yeah believe yeah. it or not yeah. no okay. right or, or or and even if you're not writing about muslims if just if you're writing period right and then then it or then it's organic correct yes yeah. yeah. The third criterion is that the Muslim character should not be solely defined by religion. We have many efforts made to include a Muslim, and then they're like a robot, and they're only either political or religious beings, and they're not multidimensional. So it should be one part of your background story, one part of who you are, not the defining feature. Yeah, no, I was going to say, this is where I'm hopeful, because, I, you know, if you look at other minority communities, let's just take the LGBTQ community. Um, shows 40, 50 years ago started this way. The, they're the gay, gay best friend, they're the gay neighbor, and that's how they were identified. And, and, and obviously the work that, you know, the, that community is doing is, is, is a model for many other communities, including the Muslim community. And so I'm hopeful there. I'm hopeful that we are starting to see it like the Moes, the Miss Marvels, the Ramis, the Moon Knights. You know, I am, although Moon Knight, you know, I mean, that was a, created by a Muslim. But, but my point is we are starting to move away from the Muslim that adheres to the five prayers and that's all that identifies them. Or the Muslim, and, I choose, and Dr. Evelyn will get to that, or the Muslims that's, that's the good guy who, who is, you know. The patriotic. The patriotic, maybe, maybe one that doesn't practice, and, but to, to non-Muslim audiences, he or she is the hero. That's right. Or, or on, I, the, on the flip side, somebody who is practicing and showcased their faith on their sleeve, but that has nothing to do with the story. It's just like, a, it's just coloring. That would just be, coloring. exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 The fourth criterion is for the Muslim character to have a strong presence. We do not expect every single movie or TV show to have a strong Muslim presence, yeah. but there seems to be a tendency. We included a Muslim there in the background. Right. Uh, Dr. Kadri on Grey's Anatomy is one example. Wonderful, amazing character, but she, it didn't matter if she was there or not. And when she was no longer there, it didn't change the storyline at no all. No one really noticed she was gone. Exactly. Yeah. So to you know, try to think about the solution, if you're trying to diversify, it's not throwing someone in the background. Right. And the fifth criterion is to show the diversity of the community. As I mentioned, we're starting to see that. So to move away from all Arabs are Muslims and to showcase how diverse two billion Muslims are who, in terms of identity, in terms of experience. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, sometimes it's not, you know, um, clear or just, you know, you know, that, that nuance, for example, there's a great show on uh, CBS, FBI, um, with a Muslim lead who is really Muslim in real life, Zico Zaki, and he's his main his the character is Muslim. So sometimes we don't get it the way we want it, right? Because he is that patriotic Muslim. But we're I mean I know we're happy that the show exists because it is moving the needle. I agree. I actually really like FBI, exactly. even though it sounds like he's doing the typical good Muslim yeah. patriotic FBI agent. <laughs> He is just an FBI agent like on any Dick Wolf show. And maybe there are two episodes where he's proving his patriotism. But he's just a character on the show as an FBI agent. And and I think it's an important representation. Right. And and, and diverse means diversity in race, um, socioeconomic, level of practice. I think it's also um, why those there's because there's a debate kind of within the community. We can get to this about LGBT Muslims being, you know, should there's a whole there's a whole thing to unpack there yeah but that is diversity of that is diversity is. of course it is that, that, that's right that's right um it, and, and and so uh, thank you for kind of laying down the the, the uh, salient features of the narrative test um I, what, what i wanted to ask you about because i thought that was also a fascinating point you make in your in, in your article in in, the, in your books um this idea that again like i had questioned about the good bad analysis not being sufficient and it's more about the logics that are being perpetuated right and and i think that it's it's important to talk about because we are talking about um you know other voices and other narratives and other representation also kind of and how that informs the portrayal of arabs and muslims um you know we have the example of the uh, black mammy for example Mm -hmm. a trope or the uh magical negro trope which are you know tropes we see even to this day um so when we talk about how far we've come you know how far have we come when you know you start using stereotypical black for example or, you know portrayals so I, i'd love for you to talk about that uh, evelyn in terms of how they that may have informed kind of one of you know some of the point points that you know you and sue make in the in the narrative test yes um in the book i yeah. have one chapter that looks at roughly 2010 to 2015 right. when there are a lot of patriotic Muslims on television and also a lot of secular Muslims. Yeah. And I call refer to this time period as um, creating representations that are stereotype confined. So stereotype Stereo. confined mm-hmm. uh, representations. So, okay, there's a terrorist. There's so many of them. We're going to challenge it by having a patriotic yeah. Muslim. Right. Are, and, there's, are there some examples just to so our, our, our listeners have oh, a point of reference? Yes. A great example would be like siege. But I mean, I, I know That's, that predates oh. your... Sorry, but the siege is a perfect example. Yeah. It does predate yeah. it, but yeah. it, it established it right. early That's on. I mean. But in that, any, in that time period, the 2010 to 2015 time period, I'm just Or curious. any NCIS oh, yeah. <laughs> series. Mm-hmm. Right. So Homeland is a good example. There is a character, Farah, who mm-hmm. was an Iranian Muslim hijabi on in the CIA. And in the process, she was there for at least a season, maybe two. Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, she's killed at the hands of a terrorist and proves that she's willing to die for her mm-hmm. country. That's right. Um, right. There are many of these. I'm sure I could come up with others. More more recently, uh, this one's actually kind of interesting. Uh, Jack Ryan, uh, yeah, season yeah. one. Uh, uh, Jim Greer is the name of the character played by Wendell Pierce. He's a black Muslim mm-hmm. uh, CIA agent. Uh, it was the most popular pathway to supposedly challenging stereotypes after 9-11, and it's responding to a stereotype and confining Muslims to responding to a stereotype. Ah, so it's very confining. So yeah. it's still your good or bad in relation to terrorism. That's right. It's still within the sort of natural, like uh, national security apparatus. Yes. Where do Muslims fall on that? Are they, you know, you with a us threat? or against us? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, I just wanted to add right. one thing and real then, quick. Mm-hmm. Any episodic TV series that starts with the Muslim being the suspect and ends with the Muslim not being the suspect, that's still problematic Correct. Mm-hmm. because audiences still view that Muslim. Muslim or that religion as problematic. Mm. And so we saw a lot of that after 9-11. Yeah. And it was a Hollywood's way to help or thinking that they were helping us. Thinking and it wasn't helping. actually very productive because at the end of the day, subliminally, like people are thinking, those Muslims, 
you know. Yeah. Yeah. That was very common on 24. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. think the terrorist is a Muslim, but surprise, it's the white president of the United States. Or, yeah. And, or, or only even, for an hour, though. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or even subliminal stuff like Allahu Akbar being, oh, yeah. you know, being called, the, the adhan, the call to prayer being called when there's a beheading or or some violent act. There's like subliminal damage there. And, and so, yeah. you know, there's, it was, it's, it's, it was very problematic. A lot continues to be problematic, but we're working our way through all that yes. by getting, you know, doing our work and creating those pipelines and consulting, you know, and sometimes saying, you know what, we're going to walk away from that and we're not going to consult or saying when someone calls and says, can you look at this footage? And, and we're like, did you already shoot it? They're like, yes. We're like, no, we're yeah. not going to watch it. And, but it, that's a really important point because I, and it's the second time you, you, you raise that in terms of when you're, when, when you in, say yeah. the two of yeah, you or anybody that. else is brought into the, you know, to, to, to consult yeah. principal photography, all the, sh all the filming, majority of the filming has already been done. Right. So you know, I asked the question about representation versus tokenism. Like, is that just sort of a tokenistic gesture then? At I, that I point? think back in the day, I think they were, they, and I, and I shouldn't use the word they because I'm, I'm making a blanket statement. Sure. Cause we I talk about Jack was... Ryan. I wanted to quickly mention, I and mean, we, and we talked about this even on the last episode, you know, they had a Muslim consultant on that, on that show. Oh, I, it was us. Uh, yeah, and then Omar was, <laughs> was up for. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yes, uh, yes. But Omar. we also consulted yeah, sure, on sure, it sure, as sure. well. I actually want to hear like what what is the current state of Hollywood's relationship with the consult the consultants, whatever that is. Um, is it like, hey, a few people know a few people, and they, if they remember, they'll make a call, or is it a lot more diligent and organized? What is what is what is that relationship right now with Hollywood and the group of folks that are consulting Hollywood? I, you know, Impact's Hollywood work started like 30 years ago, mm -hmm. by the way. So mm -hmm. not just 2011, but yeah. I think back in the day it was, who can we get? Who can we get to help us? Mm -hmm. And then as organizations and people like Devil, Dr. Evelyn, you know, basically branded themselves as consultants as certainly Impact's Hollywood Bureau, yeah. we became the kind of the go-to. Mm. I would argue yeah. when I hear when someone says, you know, to me, Sue, I, I reached out to Dr. Evelyn and, and Dr. Evelyn recommended you or someone talks to me, I recommend Dr. Evelyn. There are definitely some staples at this point in the industry that when it involves Muslim narratives, okay. they reach out to. Right. We're, we're, on, we're on top of mind. It wasn't always the case. And Evelyn, Dr. Evelyn, you can talk more about that. But like it wasn't always the case. Yes. I at first when I moved here four years ago, I it was the first time that I had opportunities to consult, and I thought, oh, maybe it's because I'm in L.A., but as Sue said, it's because of the Muslim ban. There was greater awareness. Yeah. There was greater desire to, to get it right, to, you know, we, Sue and I have talked a lot about how uh, Trump was good for Muslims yep. because it led to outrage and mobilization and change that wasn't possible before. Mm -hmm. So the Hollywood industry has produced stereotypes, damaging stereotypes for a century, but they didn't actually act to change things until they were outraged by the Trump administration. It was their way of resistance, right? And, and that's why he, Trump was the silver lining for our work here. Mm -hmm. I just also wanted to say, you asked the direct question, and I don't think we answered your question. Mm -hmm. The relationship, I think, back earlier, before Trump, after 9-11 in, in that period, I think it was maybe to minimize maybe to minimize outrage? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's no one answer. <laughs> Prior, after 9-11, um, and then the Trump era with the Muslim ban, it really was, I think, a way to help um, with the resistance. Mm. Yes. And now, I feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, with those who we are talking to, they do want to tell a better story, because guess what? Now it's their reputation. Right. And, you know, their their image in, in how, you know, how whether or not they're lazy, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I think just a quick follow up answer. to that: Is it writers? Is it producers? Is it who? who All who? of the above. I mean, okay. we'll be reached out from the top of the network at mm. times. Yeah. Nice. yeah, I would say that right after nine eleven, it was trying to appease the community. Yeah. Cares upset about this representation. The ADC is on our case. So yeah. these little okay, mm -hmm. the Patriot, and then the other one was the secular Muslim, yeah. Kumail Nanjiani, Aziz Ansari, Shahs of Sunset. Uh, and again, there's nothing, this is part of our community. Sure. There's nothing wrong with it, but this is what was possible at that time period. We have this fanatic figure, this extremist, but look, 
to counterbalance, we have these secular people who don't care about Islam. Mm -hmm. It's me meaningless to them. They're drinking, they're having sex, they're doing all these things. Like you mentioned, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep going back to the siege, but like, because <laughs> yeah. it's not a good movie. But, but, but and, and uh, you know, but, but Tony Shalhoub's character is exactly mm. that. Though yes. both of those first points that you make, which is he's not only the patriotic Muslim, but he's also Frank, the one you know he drinks. He, che you know, he cheats on his wife, you know, so he's also the secular Muslim. Yes, he is. Right? So, yes, that's an important yeah. uh, iteration beginning. And to answer your earlier question yeah. about uh, how not all positive yeah. representation is good, right. these are there examples go. that patriot is good, it's better, and the secular is good, and it's part of our larger community, but it doesn't open up representation. Yeah. And oftentimes with the patriot, it actually can sustain logics that legitimize the exclusion of Muslims. Yeah. Uh, with my first book, I looked at a lot of storylines right. where it was like, well, we're really sad, we're really sorry, but because of the state of national security, we have to discriminate. We all feel really bad about it, but it's necessary. So these logics were being promoted, mm -hmm. even though there was a quote unquote, good, sympathetic Muslim character. Can I ask? So it's a it's five your point. Show. It's you a, can uh, ask anything <laughs> you want. <laughs> it's a five point test, right? What, if any, um, content out there is like, Five out of five, they yeah. just rocked it. <laughs> there are many. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so, the Rami, yeah. Mo, We Are Lady Parts, Ms. sort Marvel. of, Miss Marvel. Yeah. Nice. Those are the one. Those gotcha. are that's what we want more of. Which is okay. great. You, like you mentioned, a few of the shows that we do. You, Omar, and I definitely wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. But since we're, you know, we, we began talking about Aladdin way back when, um, and certainly the last time we saw you on, uh, you know, and had you on the show, um, Evelyn, we did talk about it in depth. Um, where, like Disney. Disney's interesting journey now from Aladdin to, I mean, I'm obviously skipping over a lot, but you've got Miss Marvel. Uh, before Miss Marvel, you actually have Moon Knight in, in another show we've mentioned. Moon, and, and But those two in particular, I want to sort of pause on because how do those two, because you, you, you also referenced Miss Marvel as being a five out of five. Why do you give it a five out of five when one could argue that there's still a lot of that sort of orientalist trope in both of those films? I mean, b b both of those, um, you know, uh, shows. I can speak to Ms. Marvel. Please. And, and uh, you're I talking can... also to two huge comic book nerds. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I was we were both eagerly awaiting those shows. I mean, I, I know I was and I think Omar, too. Uh, both of our kids grew up reading the comic book, yes. Ms. Marvel. So in the case of Ms. Marvel, especially... I was really eager to see what they would do. Yes. Um, but anyway, Moon Knight's please. a bit different. But I put uh, Moon Knight more in the Orientalist yes. category as one of these examples where it's really hard to redo this in a non-Orientalist, yeah. non-Egyptologist way. Right. But they did what they could under the parameters. And they got an Egyptian director. And they so. did, exactly. yes. Yeah. And, and, yeah. A, and a really cool one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah right. the and the music, that. like my kids music, were just, yes. yeah, loving the music. And the casting choices. And the casting choices, that's right. And I just want to say, just I don't know... For those outside of LA, we had an opera here at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion where they used to do the Oscars called Omar, the, oh. op the opera about Omar Ibn Said, oh. who was a slave and brought to America. Mm. And, and like, this is like when I was a child, I would have never seen an opera about the Quran. I mean, it was literally the Quran, the I, musical. I haven't and heard it of was amazing. Did you see it? I'm, I was out of town the whole time. So you know, I, the whole I, time. Yeah, I kept, wow. Yeah. Okay. No, no, but you, real quick, we, I mean, because so it's not just the PBS show was also about Omar Ben Said, yeah. and we, we had uh, Michael Wolf on the on, yeah. on the podcast. Well, I think a few you're just making a point about how far we've that's come. right. How far yeah, we've exactly. because I remember watching. This is just random, but I'll just share it for kicks. There's an episode of Growing Pains. Yeah. And we we literally he uh, Mike Mike Seaver, <laughs> Kurt yep. Cameron walks Kurt into Trump, the yep. and I'm 10 years old. He walks into the um, 7 Eleven. And literally, there's a like stereotypical stereotypical South Asian clerk. Right. That got us excited. It did. And it was literally one uh, word he said. I was excited uh, at Back to the Future when I saw the Libyan speaking Arabic. And then it was <laughs> later in life that, that I realize? was like, oh, crap. <laughs> that Oops. wasn't good. Oops. But it was like, wow, we were included, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even though the that, actors weren't, I think they were like, no, I, but I'm talking back in, it was 82. <laughs> no, I, I, was the 82. funny thing is, I don't even no, know no. if they were back actually the speaking was, Arabic. It might have just been, sorry. J j right? uh, whatever it was, yeah. the imagery. And, and yeah, that's how the bar, how low exactly. the bar was. To prove yeah. to you that we consume the same content you did and that we are of yeah, your you vintage, it's 1985, not 1982. Yeah, Back to the future. <laughs> Back to the... <laughs> yeah, 85. Summer, summer. I promise you. Yeah. We're, 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 we're equally we uh, geeks. Geek. Yeah. 
and back to the yeah. future so, was was it in the same summer when it came out? No, no. ET got. Okay. I'll tell you what happened. What? And oh, was it was re-released. No, no, ET, ET was, was re-released. Re oh God. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I, I went, that I went was a long summer. time ago, and I'm not. I, I mean, okay. but the reality <laughs> yeah. is that got me excited. Yeah, I hear you. Um, same same thing. Same thing yeah, for us. I even though, yeah, I Dr. Evelyn, yeah. you yeah, were saying. No, I actually wanted to ask both of you. Mm -hmm. You think Ms. Marvel is reinventing oh, the old right, tropes yes. and failing the obey the al Sultani test. I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. I love just the 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 details uh, and they got it right. They got it right and well, it felt authentic. Be deep. And there's nothing when you say details, what do you mean by details? I, I, uh, you gotta... Shoes off. I mean, I, I don't have sure, sure, shoes sure, off sure. in the okay. moss. So, um, no, no, but, but in a, as an aggregate, you're talking about the cultural, the like, cultural parts religious of references. Being a Pakistani family. Yeah, and sure. exactly. Indian Pakistani yeah. family. Right. Okay, Little sure. terms sure. like Nani and I mean, and the list Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. And there's a lot. As Urdu speakers for us, I mean, there was a lot. You know what I mean? And the way they the way they interchange between. Or, or, or interface between both Urdu and English, I and mean, that's how we grew up yep. in our household. Yeah, so of that is so authentic. Completely agree. Where I would argue to, to your point in terms of why, or not necessarily that it failed, but but the the, the, the sort of old Orientalist trope being um, obviously, I think the uh, like the, the the idea of the partition and how much that informs so much of the stories that you know people from the subcontinent, arguably more Pakistani than Indian, but certainly Pakistanis grow up listening to and hearing from their family members was spot on. The sort of more of the supernatural, I guess, yes, elements the of the jinn and the, and which is at the end of the day, it's not even, it's kind of it's, a. It's a critique of your, I think you're critiquing the, the story, but not necessarily the, 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 the Muslim aspects of the story, like the, the color and the, the details. Like, which is a separate issue, I think, mm -hmm. potentially, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think it should also be worth noting. I mean, you know, uh, those choices that are made yeah. in the visual, in, in the uh, live action version, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. say, as opposed to the comic book character who was created and greenlit by a Muslim. I mean, we should right. mention that, mm -hmm. by, or by two separate Muslims, but nonetheless, Muslims were involved in that project from the very get go. Miss Marvel as a character, yeah. Moon Knight, in fact, though. I, as far as I, if I remember correctly, in the comic book, has no connection to Egypt, Egyptology. So that was a creative choice. Well, right? the, the, yeah. That's the, made. The, no, no, no. It, the the oh, story of the Moon Umaris. Knight has to do with um, the, 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 the moon, the, the, moon. The, the, the god of uh, someone, Horus or yeah, one of the yeah. Egyptian gods. So sure. to, okay, to Evelyn's sorry, point, sorry. it's kind of embedded in the story kind of like Aladdin. So if they're going to do Moon Knight, they have to, okay, they have to go in that direction. Sure. Yes. Um, I know they did a lot of research on it. I was, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Good, I, I, good point, good point. But like, again, I, like with Miss Marvel, like the, the introduction of the djinn and all of that, that's a choice yeah. Yeah. that's made by, you know, like the, like the uh, live action show. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just say... Yeah. I, will, I do want to say that Hollywood has an infatuation with the gin. Mm -hmm. I really, I don't know what that's about, but right. we get, we're asked a lot about the gins. Um, I wanted to say nothing's perfect. The reality no, for is, sure. and I'm the, not, re, the right. reality is even Rami, Rami, <laughs> the fact that Rami exists is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It, are all Muslims happy about Rami? No. You know, but do, are we happy that Rami exists? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Rami is my favorite Great. Muslim content. And, and I that's love wonderful. it. I love but it. But what I'm saying is, even though they pass the five, you know, points, it's still, a project is not perfect. Yeah. If you act, ask the Asian community about rich, rich um, crazy, crazy rich Asians, mm -hmm. there'll be some criticisms. Sure. If you ask some, you know, some in the black community about something else, there'll be some criticisms. Mm -hmm. We will, you know, perfection is for God, I always say. The fact that Rami exists, the fact that Mo exists, Miss Marvel, and by Muslim showrunners. That's right. That's what we should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, the Big Sick was Sundance's largest sell Amazing. in um, 2017. Wow. I don't know the amount. I don't yeah, know the yeah. amount. Yeah, yeah. But at, in 2017, that was the biggest, like, the biggest right. film that sold. Mm -hmm. And... Well, many weren't happy about about the film, mm -hmm. but most were, mm -hmm. and and we're not gonna we're not doing this to avoid criticism, or say we're gonna do this and it's like perfection and or, or else we're not. This is our journey, mm -hmm. and we don't know where we are in our journey in the in the story of life. We could be in chapter two for all yeah. we know, yeah. and so all that is happening right now, the problematic content, mm -hmm. 
and the damage that the industry did and the vilification is part of our story. And I'll tell you one thing, it's putting a fire under our asses to do it our, uh, by ourselves and yeah. do it our, you know, to, to tell our own stories. For sure. Um, not to imply, I want to be very clear, not to imply that we were lazy back then, but now this impetus, this mm-hmm. this passion, I has never, I've never seen that before. And, you so know, true. Growing that's up. a great lead and in. To and the so Hollywood I, and I Bureau. apologize for cussing, I, but that's as bad as it's going to get. <laughs> no, <Ask> no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a great lead into the work. We're going to lose doing. our PG rating on IT. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, no it's I'm as kidding. bad totally. as it's going <laughs> to get. <I'm> totally <laughs> so, kidding. No, that's, no, no, that's a great lead in. Real quick. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Because um, you raised some really interesting points because it's not just, and I think, again, Disney is a great example. It's not just about casting. Like, for example, you mentioned Aladdin. What they got right was the casting. So that's in front of the camera. But what we see with shows like uh, Moon Knight, what we see with shows like Miss, uh, Miss Marvel, uh, and, of course, non-Disney content as well, is that you have creative, tw- you know, you have creative voices that are involved as directing, you know, like directing the shows and the film films and writing and so it's both behind and in front of the camera and in now. some big in some it, really big course. project i mean That's for right. a while there even the the director of blade mm-hmm. was for, was going was going to be um a muslim a muslim, a muslim pakistani yeah. not to mention right? Marcel ali himself yes. is, 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 is a muslim. yeah exactly and just Speaking by existing Rami, and yeah. just yeah. by existing uh-huh. is is change that's right uh, check out quiet part loud by jordan peele's monkey pop production um, it's on Spotify. We consulted on that. Has a strong Muslim female lead. Nice. Um, it, it, this is just yeah. we are moving in the right direction. Right. We're not. We're not. It's not going to be perfect. Like you said, but we're moving. Right. Ahead. And I think that's a really good point about like in terms of uh, not being perfect, but also that we're going to have criticisms from even within. With, the, mostly within. within. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and it's not possible <laughs> for <laughs> one what, show. So let's yeah. talk about what some. Most, I, what are what are some of the criticisms? I, I, I well, you, before I well, even you raised answer, a good one. Yeah, earlier, yeah I want to. That's earlier exactly earlier what I. Yeah. Muslims with concerns with intersectionality and yeah. stuff like that. I, I was so. I was gonna let them bring it up. Yeah, but yeah but he's he's I, he's talking about there's a criticism of um, from the more conservative Muslim community about hey uh, do we really need to present Muslims as LGBT? My, what I was saying earlier was hey if we're talking about the entire tapestry mm-hmm. the, the entire spectrum then. Um, like then it's there, right? right so, right, right. but I'd love, love to hear kind of yeah. the, about the pushback you've gotten, if any, and how you respond to that. Sure. And I wanted to just bring up a, something that Parvez you said sure. about they get them getting it right, like they're trying to help them getting it right. Mm. Is is that we need to also shift the paradigm to to us making it right? Thank you. I like that. You know, and, and I'm not yeah, pushing no, back. No, no, I'm just no, no, saying no. That's that that's beautiful. where our paradigm needs to be because because that, we're not we're in this and and nice. that paradigm means we're still outside. Yeah, you so know, a true. seat at the table. No, we don't want a seat at the table. We want the table. You know, and I like and that. I want Asian Americans to want the, have the table, and I want the black Amer you know black mm. you know black the, the community to have the table. Every minority to have the table, including. The white community, you know, you know, so it's, it, you know, we do have to change a little bit our language so, so we true. can change our paradigm. Otherwise, we will always otherwise be other or uh, we'll otherize ourselves. ourselves yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not, I'm not criticizing no, no, you. No, I'm no, just saying, point, you know. And but, just before we get to the kind of the, the pushback and the controversy, can, can you, I'm curious who some, who you see as some of the most influential names, Muslim influencers in the in, on the content creation well, side yeah I mean, and let's and let's not forget about the business side of the business oh, either right. but sure we can talk That's about great. that yeah, um uh obviously rami rami was chosen um rami yusuf was chosen by the hollywood reporter as one of the top showrunners right that's huge mm-hmm. that's huge obviously miss um marvel's son amanat female mm. she started the comic book back in the day that's right um she was the lead on that she's a big player past I mean, guest of the show by the way we had her uh, yeah way, she's awesome yeah, right when the comic book had come out we had no, her on the chime show. in please chime in mo amr yeah. Muhammad amr yeah. i mean you know the fact that he was on black adam was awesome <laughs> like he also you know yeah, muhammad uh, um, muhammad um amr is a huge yeah. Player yeah. in in, in nice. the industry. I really got to watch that show. Let's yeah. not forget yeah. Lena Khan. Lena, you know, we've had on the show. Let's not forget Lena Khan. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. And and please chime in with other names. But I'm just saying these are the up and coming. Yeah. Nice. Not even up and coming. They've arrived. Yeah. And there's more up and coming. I mean, I, I got to mention shout out to my friend Azar Osman. Uh, you know, as someone yes, as well. I yes. mean, not only as producer on Rami, a friend of Rami's, yeah. but also you know he was uh, you know 
Uh, Enmo, the, right? Uh, Enmo. Enmo, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And he was, um, you know, uh, he had a cameo in Miss Marvel. Yeah, that's the absolutely. Falafel, falafel. Let's not forget about Charmaine, um, uh, Charmaine Obey. Course. Yeah, you know, from Saving Face. And, 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 and as a and, huge Star Wars fan, there's a rumor she sure. might even go as far as direct. Directing. That would be like Correct. completely not, next yeah. level, right? Let's, With, without any necessarily... Muslims right. in, in the kind it's just she happens to be a Muslim director. That, that'd be an amazing so success plenty. story. There's plenty. There are plenty here yeah. arrived, yeah. working hard, um, and now plenty up and coming. Um, nice. But those are just a few of my. Yeah, opinions. I I agree. The the two that came to my mind, which speaks to your LGBTQ question, mm -hmm. is sort of which comes out of Canada. It's on uh, HBO Max, and it's about a trans Pakistani Muslim. Mm -hmm. I think it's an amazing show. And uh, we are lady parts out of England. Um, what Neda, is her, Neda Mansouri. There we go. I mean, Neda keep Mansouri. your eye on her. Yes. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. And there's also queer Muslim representation on that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say one more. Uh, transplant. My God, we love Transplant, yeah. right? Yeah. With Hamza Haq, you know, out of Canada also. Awesome. Yeah. You know, so, and please, can we not forget about Zarka Nawaz? I was just about to say, please, yeah. because we've she had Zarka on twice. She is a veteran, yeah, yeah veteran. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, so we need to not sell our, on the like, prayer. Well, it's happening, people. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just need to continue this yeah. momentum, yeah. you know. And again, perfection's for God, right. and and no minority community is is satisfied. And and I think an interesting point. And I think this will kind of lead into the conversation that we've been teasing for a little bit about this idea of. Like the pushback that comes from, say, let's say, not not just conservative circles, but just in general, maybe uh, from the Muslim community, from within the Muslim community. Yeah. It, and, but and this raises the broader question, I think, is how do we define Muslim? Can't in in Look, the, the way in, you define Muslim, Muslim representation. No, exactly. the way you define Muslim is the one that believes in the oneness of God. Sure. Everything else is everything else is fluid. Yeah, that's right. it. And but but how but do you? You right, can even I mean, say one who says they're Muslim, period. Right? That, absolutely. Exactly. One who says I am Muslim and we cannot question that. That's right. Exactly. I agree. I agree. And, and how do, exactly. Right. And so so there is no litmus test. Sure. And, and so my point in raising that is because, you know, that includes, though, the most liberal and secular absolutely. of Muslim. And, and non-practicing. And non-practicing. But it also includes the most sort of ardent conservative of yes. us as sure. well. Which is why, and, and hence the question, which is, like if we're talking about inclusivity, um, then then I think taking the criticisms of even those who are on the say the more conservative side of things, um, how do we deal with the criticisms or the pushback that we see from that from from that side of the spectrum, if you will? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I do think that there's a lot of pressure on these shows to quote unquote get it get right. It right. It's not possible yeah. for a show, let's say Rami, uh -huh. to uh, resolve a hundred years of stereotypes. It's there not go. fair. Yeah. It's not to possible. Put that on. Yeah. Well, it's and me and Omar come from our corporate gigs where we're where uh, certainly it's increased now where there's other people in the room that are brown also and that yeah. may have Muslim sounding names. But certainly, you know, being in corporate America as long as we have, we're sort of the solitary well, Muslim. Yeah, trope, I'll give, right, I'll give character. you. I'll give you. I'll give you. So I'm, I'll give you an speak analogy. for your entire race, entire religion entire everything so, so it's a volume it's a yeah. volume issue yeah. right if you're the only as X, i was y. growing up i had to represent in high school and whatnot college even had to represent all muslims heck i had to represent brown people and and, and anybody who wasn't white white and christian um similarly just by analogy if you have one show it ha it better be perfect because that's all you got once you get like where we're 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 getting there, where the there, there's so many there's so many the shows mass. that people haven't even watched most of them. Mm -hmm. Like some people who watch Rami have not watched Ms. Marvel. People who watch Ms. Marvel never heard of We Are Lady of parts. Yeah. So not there's not like the burden on one particular show to be, get it perfect. And you can kind of like buffet style, right? Yeah, and, and then, so, so, uh, so the more the more you have, kind of the easier it becomes on any given. Um, um, you know, content producer, right? right? So yeah. five stories are right. not going to represent everybody. Yeah. And yeah. so it's fine if conservative people don't like a particular yeah. show, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't represent the diversity of our community. And our community includes queer people and trans people and religious people and secular people and yeah. all of that. So yeah. we want to see all of it represented. Oh, and for right. every, every viewer to be able to say, I see myself in this, but two billion Muslims, you're not going to see yourself in one person's story. So true. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be fair, we've gotten 
really, uh, we've gotten like I, I think the there is an argument I've heard. I don't think it's t totally accurate where the conservative folks have said you're only showing one. Ex but but to be honest, like yeah. look at like Mahershala Ali's character in, in Rami. He was like a practicing right. imam, the daughter as well. Right. Um, I also was telling for I also appreciate the fact that he wasn't perfect because at the end, with a spoiler, minim, minor spoiler alert, he kind of loses his cool mm -hmm. at the end of season two and like is throwing out f bombs and cursing at Rami, right? So it, he's practicing, but he's also human and vulnerable. Right. Yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. But also right. too right. practicing and, and you know throwing f bombs. I, you know it can they can live in the same oh, world. Course, I mean they course. can. I yeah. mean with all due respect, yeah. no, they no, really no. can. No, that's for what sure. I'm saying. Yeah. That's the whole yeah, point. Exactly. That's how they got it right. But yeah. the image, the image of a conservative Muslim might be like, how could an imam say that? Well, no, the, the Ex imam is human. Exactly. Um, that, was, so, that was how they so, got it right. Yeah, that's exactly. how they got it right. Is right. exactly my exactly. point. Even as well because. Like to even humanize the yes. so-called imam. Exactly. Like and I think even Miss Marvel did it wonderfully, which is because I, I think you know the imam, um, you know they could have just made it a caricature, you know, because like right because one of the thing one of one of the uh, characters is uh, is offended by the fact that there's no female representation on the board. Like no mosque has ever seen that before, right? But again, I'm sorry, this is and sarcasm might not come across on the mic, but 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 the way the imam handles it, yeah. very you know gently and and carefully, and and uh, in fact encouraging her to run for the uh, for office and so on, um, again beautifully shows that that even a foreign sort of sounding imam, which again that exists in the Muslim yeah. community, uh, can. Be also not, you know, like anti, you know, be a misogynist or a raving anti-feminist or something. Yeah. The fact that he wanted to see female representation on the board. I, Again, I also, that nuance I, is important. Another I kind right. of yeah. funny, I, I find it really um, a great character is the uncle. uncle is it Nassim, uncle, uh, Nassim, Nassim, Nassim and Rami? Yeah. Like yes. he's he's kind of closeted gay, but he's also very like he has some of the kind of the comical aspects of being a. An, uh, uh, you know, uh, an uncle, right? Yeah. So it kind of mixes all those different he, aspects without just boxing him into yeah. one. Like he's like this kind of chauvinistic uncle, <laughs> right? With some stereotypical, you know, and then he also has this aspect of his personality. And his, so I think it's I, I think that's a great, and, and, but I think good. volume, you raised the issue of volume yeah. and I think that's a really important one because I think of what a lot of people get caught that's up on as right. well. Well, we don't want to see shows like Rami because Rami's no role model. I'm like, what? But Rami isn't trying. One, he's not trying to be a role model. Number two, like again, if when you only have one show, then maybe you could be like, well, oh gosh, the Muslim character is not someone that are you know, you, like young yeah. people watching can aspire towards. But with enough volume, you're gonna see it all. You're gonna see the good, the, the like the good, the bad, the ugly. And I, yeah. what I mean by that is not good representation, bad Muslim, you know, bad representation, but good, bad, ugly, as in all of the sort of complexities yeah. and color of the American Muslim experience yeah. or the Muslim experience period. I don't know yeah. if we're going to be having this conversation in 20 years. Interesting. I really don't. I really think we're going to, we're moving in the right direction and we're going to see that volume. We're going to see that critical mass. Love it. We're going to see a million Ramis. Well, yeah. you know, many more Ramis. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to quantify it. Yeah. The Mo's, the, the Senna's, you know, the Lena's and the, and everybody that's coming through the pipeline. And trust me, we work with these, you know, yeah. studios, their programs, they're getting people in. I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a, a rose colored glasses kind of person, no. but we are really moving in the right direction. Right. Let me ask you this, Sue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because here's, because I'm hoping that you're I right. Know. I'm hoping, but my concern is that if this change happened in response to Muslim ban, do we need another galvanizing event ban. to create more change? Or is it not on you know is it not on the table anymore? They did what they did and they'll move on to other. Uh, the short answer to for me to from me is no, because my generation is trans is transitioning out. People older than me are transitioning out. You know, we have Gen Zs yeah, and we have Gen Alphas that are coming up. So we're starting all over. That's the term. So Gen, Gen Alphas. Alpha. Is that what it's <laughs> called? Is yeah. that what it's called? Okay. okay. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, we were wondering. So it, it, the, these, and I'll say what whatever age range they are, they're amazing people who are not going to put up with what we put up because we were trying to assimilate Omar and Pardes. Thank you. And, no, no, absolutely. And Dr. Evelyn, we were trying to assimilate. You and, know? 
And so, no, I just want to just yeah. really underscore, yeah. we're going to have conversations in 20 years, sure. but I don't know if they're going to be this conversation. There you go. And, because, you know, and yeah. what I keep marveling at. And inshallah episode, is right, Dr. Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I keep marveling at this because every time I have an idea or I want to raise something, you you go exactly there, Sue. So you're we have reading not my rehearsed mind. this. No, we have, we have not. not. This yeah. is not scripted. Yeah. This is not rehearsed. Yeah. Because I was just thinking about my kids and the yeah. way they consume content. Yeah. Uh, you know, whereas, like, for example, for me, you know, seeing like Hassan Minhaj on, t uh, you know, the, the fact that he even has a Netflix special, I'm like, kids, kids, kids like get like gather around. There's like a brown person on TV. Like, it's still so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Whereas for them, like, th right. they they don't register on that same. You know, it doesn't register the same way. They're yeah. just kind of like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You know, or I'm like, hey, the end of the Star Wars movie has Ahmed in a last, you know, as yeah. one of the actors' last name, like mind blown. You know, so I'm still consuming <laughs> content as that little twelve year old, like you said. I so or like, like who Sue had mentioned, nothing. who ran it, it was like excited about seeing, you know. Lib Libyan terrorist <laughs> and exactly. in, 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 in back in the now, future. Yeah. No, no, yeah. but it's so true. Um, you know, I, or like, oh God, watching like, you know, uh, what was that movie? Uh, God, uh, Delta Force as a kid. I mean, that, that applies to <laughs> yeah. a lot of other, not just like film, but like, I'll give yeah. you an example. Like, I am not into rap. Uh, but like Lupe Fiasco, mm. you're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to check that out because he's Muslim, right? Yeah. This is like 15 years, 10, 10 plus years ago. Lupe's really good, by the um, way. And it's hip hop, not <laughs> yeah. rap. You, you, you sound okay, like a grandpa. Okay, so there, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> you a boomer. Uh, showing my. Showing my 90s. All as my kids would say, you're having a boomer moment. Know, but that's totally. fine. But yeah, no, 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 my point is, though, just as an example, yeah. like, we, like we would consume everything that had yeah. even. And that's what I mean. Muslimness that's right. It, right. And celebrate it. And celebrate it. And our kids Good, are bad, like, ugly. Eh, that's what I mean. Watch. I don't feel like watching. They can Ms. change. Marvel exactly. They can be. They, they, they can be um, consumers who are discriminating. They, they, I don't like that. I like this. I love that. Or I don't you know? even care. I'm not and so, to your right. point about Gen Z and, and Gen Alpha, yeah. which uh, we mm -hmm. were thinking what Coming the term up. was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just consume content differently, yeah. and they even bring different expectations. Right. And and you know what else they do? They, 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 in, they show their power by the dollar, <laughs> their purchase power, right? right? And and so that's how they 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 talk as well. If they don't like something, they're not going to put money into it. So it's like the twenty one forty five. I oh, like don't the, ask me about the ages. I have no idea. No, 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 no. What I meant is like, you know, Hollywood uh, corp corporations were going after that twenty four to twenty one to forty five market. Yeah. Um, and you're saying like that. The Gen Zs now oh, absolutely. are, the, are, are absolutely. right there in yeah. that threshold. Yeah. In fact, and, and some of us on this table, maybe all of us on this table, are beyond <laughs> beyond that. Uh, sure, sure, no, of course. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. definitely am. But yeah, my, definitely my am point, too. my point is with that generation and, yeah. and then Gen yeah. Alpha coming up and growing up. Yeah. They're going to tell con studios and industries what they like by not purchasing something for real, mm. and really not, and just really not engaging yeah and i don't know if our generation had that power so true i don't know That's if we did point. like now look right. at target look at amazon mm -hmm. look at name me another you know corporation yeah he yeah, get hijab mm -hmm. hijab models mm -hmm. uh eid cards when 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 did you ever see a eid card display at, at like target, target? yeah <laughs> When, Thank you. Yeah, they're not doing it because they just want to appease us, or they want to, you know, they want that warm and fuzzy feeling. They know where the money is. Exactly. And so, and, and so, that's what I'm talking about. That's so what, true. You know, and what I was saying was like, I still get into. I, I I walk into Target, Target, and I'm ecstatic to see. When it. you see a model, my yeah, kids on absolutely. the other hand just take it for granted. And that's the way. That's what be, success yeah. is going to look like. There you go. When Thank in 20 you. years right. we're not having this conversation. Mm -hmm. That's what you meant, and, and I wanted I to build exactly. on that. Exactly. Yeah. So. Very and that true. is why I'm hopeful. And now my hopefulness doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. We have to, we can never let go and rest on our laurels ever. So I just want to be clear that we we will ever we will forever have to keep working yeah. on this. I think that's so a great I, I, I want I do want to talk about the Hollywood Bureau. I was going to say we have, we need to talk about the Hollywood Bureau and we have to talk about of uh, Dr. Evelyn's new book. I was going to say can we do yeah. that yeah. first? Sure, yeah. either because one I, yeah. either one because Please. again, yeah. going back and listening to our last episode, you know that we that we had with you that we had you on, you were you were at that time this was going to be your forthcoming book and we began kind of teasing out some of the issues that you were dealing with. And so I think what what I found fascinating then and I find even fascinating now which is you like 
you were are or I think you 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 had mentioned that you were going to be talking about the failures of the multicultural slash liberal kind of model and approach to all of this. So please expand on that because I think and, that will, and and it wouldn't hurt just to do a yeah. quick recap of the first book as well. Okay, yeah. so well, my, the, the first book would be okay. No, sure, yes. the recap for yeah, those yeah, who haven't heard episode yeah. eighty one. Yes, yeah. uh, my first book, Arabs and Muslims yeah. in the Media: Race mm -hmm. and Representation After Nine Eleven looks at uh, the development of sympathetic portrayals of Muslims in the media, including Hollywood and news reporting and nonprofit advertising after 9-11. And it's very much constrained by this uh, patriotic Muslim character. That's the very short uh, distilled version. Mm -hmm. And then the second book picks up where that one left off to say, well, where are we today? And the first two chapters are about Hollywood. So I've already talked about the stereotype confined expansions and um, the diversity compromise. And then it looks at other institutions. So it looks at law enforcement, corporations, and universities and questions around how they approach including Muslims. But what this book is about, uh, the first book was about post 9-11. This book is about diversity politics. And it's how Muslims have come to be included in diversity politics and diversity initiatives. Mm -hmm. And even though we've used the term diversity for a long time, we started using DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, maybe 2014-ish. For sure. And uh, so I look at how Muslims are now a part of that conversation. And I argue that it happened through crisis. So through crisis moments from uh, the quote unquote ground zero mosque controversy to the Muslim ban and how these moments come up that bring Islamophobia to the public's attention. Islamophobia has been a problem for a long time, but suddenly it's become national news and people are caring about it. There were hate crimes after 9-11. They didn't make headline news, but suddenly mm -hmm. in 2015, some of some, not all, became headline news. So I look at how, I call it crisis diversity. Something happens, let's say Muslim ban. Uh, the media covers it. People are upset about it. People are outraged. Corporations issue statements. Universities create diversity initiatives. There's a lot of activity. And then the crisis moment passes and our attention wanes until the next crisis. Exactly. So I look at what's possible with crisis. So yeah. it did give us Rami. It did give us Ilhan Omar. Uh, it does do things, but I also look at the limits, that sure. if we're trying to solve a problem like Islamophobia, how far does it take us? For example, if Hollywood is responding to Muslim ban rather than its own history of stereotypical portrayals, how far will that approach take us? Wow. Yeah. That that's 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 great. Yeah, sorry. I, I uh -huh. wanted to yeah. add yeah. that if you're going to be on at, at Park so, City yeah. in Park City on January 22nd, Evelyn and I are going to have a chat about the book at Sundance. At Sundance, Sundance. Yeah, at the yeah. Sundance Film Festival. That's so amazing. If you're there, and you yeah. go every year. I do. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky to be with MPAC. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't be able to afford anything like that. But absolutely, the organization really believes in engagement with the industry and. And so, so this festival is something we did, we have done about for the last eight years. And real so. quick, the title of the book, if you can just read that. Well, I was going to say Broken, The Failed Promise of Muslim Inclusion, which we there will be. Go. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and, and I think you, you mentioned MPAC. And yes. that brings you to Sundance. But yeah. that also brings us then to for you to maybe talk yeah, about the Hollywood quick. Bureau. Um, sure. And, and I mean, you know, I was going to say this at the outset when, we were, when I even mentioned your biography or talked a little bit about your background. I mean, MPAC has been one of the premier Muslim organizations right. in the country. Right. Uh, as someone who, you know, came into uh, my own Muslim identity in the 90s, um, you know, um, and early 2000s, I mean, MPAC was already a thing. Right. Yes, predates the Hollywood Bureau. Right. And, and, and even, in fact, I think uh, MPAC's involvement in Hollywood. I mean, right. going back to the early days right. of that the organization. Vision. That vision, And yeah. one day we'll have Salam on the show I to talk about yeah. all of that. Yeah. Uh, that's my wish. So yeah. next road trip, Omar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's definitely tell us about the Hollywood Bureau. Sure. And what you're, yeah. If I can just, just yeah. kind of back Anything. a little bit mm -hmm. about the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Thank you. We're a po actually a public policy organization. Exactly. We are doing work at the intersection of, of public policy and entertainment. Right. And the, the ideology of the Muslim Public Affairs Council is based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And we see no difference and no contradiction between the Quran and the Constitution or being Muslim and being American. Absolutely none. Mm -hmm. And we feel that Islam flourishes in a democratic society as, as we can just watch the news and see that. You know, no society is perfect, 
but Islam is flourishing in America. I'm not talking about conversions or people converting to Islam. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about the religious freedom of, of being Muslim. Um, the freedom of being Muslim in Correct. America. Um, the Hollywood Bureau mm -hmm. technically existed and um, was founded in 2011, but the Hollywood work um, started 30 years ago with the founding of the Media Awards, where we honored oh, our yeah. uh, Morgan Freeman for uh, Prince of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. <laughs> that is how we got into the industry. Yeah. From there, the rest is history. We grew and grew. Amazing. What did, What do we do? Mm -hmm. We do five things. Yeah. We, we connect our Muslim talent to industry decision makers. And so basically, if a studio um, is looking for a Muslim writer, we, we make those introductions. Um, we are not the only organization that does this, but we are, like you said, Parvez, mm -hmm. the premier one that 30 years ago had this vision. Correct. Um, through our programs, our, our screenwriting labs, our fellowships, that's how we're identifying and mentoring and connecting our talent to industry decision makers, okay? Um, the second thing we do is we contribute our thought leadership by organizing and speaking on panels and writing opinion editorials um, that uh, uh, Dr. Evelyn um, um, mentioned. Um, this podcast is part of the contributing thought leadership because nice. we're having a Thank conversation you. about yeah. Evelyn, you know, Dr. Evelyn's book about Muslim narratives and what well. have you. Third thing we do is we consult on on projects, um, we're not a watchdog, and that's not to criticize any organization that has that, you know, methodology. But we do believe that if we go in and create relationships and partnerships, we will we will be able to say whatever we want to say that, to them, and there's that trust, and they will come back. Um, number three is we create short form content. Hopefully soon, more than short form, we are we are working on launching a production arm. God willing. Um, and number five, it, we celebrate through our media awards how it all started. Nice. And there are five C's because it's just easier for me to remember. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think one of the amazing things whenever I hear Sue talk about um, what she does at MPAC is mm -hmm. that they're known for consulting, but they're actually doing these labs and cultivating Muslim talent and then connecting the talent to the industry. And I think that's incredibly powerful. Yeah, thank that's you. Right, creating you do, that pipeline. Right. Yeah, creating that pipeline. So we can go from they are telling a story to we are telling the story. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because you do workshops with like, you know, budding screenwriters, oh, etc. With different yeah. partners. Yeah, absolutely. different partners. Yeah. So. And, and there's um, probably amazing. been, I'm guessing there's been some success stories coming out of, out absolutely. of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of your uh, alumni. I, I, well. I don't want to name names because yeah. they have, they are wonderful people and have done the work um, sure. and, yeah. and did the heavy lifting yeah. and they're there on their own merit. Yeah. But you could definitely connect a lot of people back to MPAC's programs. Certainly. Certainly. So thank you so much again. And oh, again, uh, taking sure. time on a set, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday rainy morning. Uh, to be with us and, of course, for hosting us. Absolutely. So. Well, I didn't, you didn't eat anything, so you're more than <laughs> welcome, but, you know. Uh, but, no, it really, couldn't, couldn't thank you enough. Um, I guess as we like to close out, um, Evelyn, where can people find out more about your work, what you do? Certainly you're still fa your faculty at USC, uh, but, yeah, tell us more. You can find more about me at my website, evelynalsultani.com. And I'm very new to Twitter, so I don't know if I even want to encourage people to see me there. But I'm at Evelyn Asultani on, on Twitter now as yeah. of a month ago. Got it. And your book, Broken, can be found on Amazon and other booksellers as Correct. well, right? Thank Online. You so yeah, much. And yeah, of course, you're teaching. Yeah. And yes, I yeah, am yeah, teaching yeah. at USC. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Sue, so where can people engage you, find out more about the work you're doing, and of course, sure. Impact's work? Sure, our website is impacthollywoodbureau.org. Mm -hmm. um, my email is hollywooddirector at impact.org. Um, and of course on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and the usual platforms. Thank you. Thank um, you. as I said, thank you for hosting us. Thank you for taking the time. So uh, listeners, as, as always, if you want to engage us, ask us questions, thoughts, please email us at, at, at diffusecongruence um, at gmail.com. Hit us up on Facebook, iTunes, please read review, uh, review every little bit helps and, uh, look out for further episodes of Diffuse Congruence. I'm <laughs> <laughs>